here on The Colour of Country Life. We're with the Deputy Premier and Member for Stuart, Dan Van Hoss Pelican. Welcome back in 2022. Yeah, thank you very much, Ricky. Thank you to you and Flo, and I hope it's a good year for uh, for all of your Flo team and all of your listeners. Oh, thank you very much. You've got a big year or a big couple of months ahead, uh, state election on the 19th of March. Uh, you've made a big announcement in the last couple of days, or certainly been welcoming, I imagine, this investment in Borough with the wind farm construction. Yeah, it's a really, really big project. We've actually been working with Neowen on this for a long time. Uh, Neowen is a French company uh, that already has projects in South Australia and, and other parts of Australia. Um, Goiter South uh, is going to be built in three stages. Goiter South uh, includes wind and solar and grid-scale battery storage. Um, so very exciting project. It's, um, it, it really is a game changer in many ways. Um, it, it will be a massive uh, electricity generation and management project, fantastic boost to the local economy, um, sort of out east of Borough. And, um, of course, it links to the New South Wales-South Australia interconnector, which uh, is, is a vitally important piece of infrastructure for the benefit of both states. Uh, and they are going to generate an enormous amount of electricity, much of which will be exported to New South Wales. Yeah, now you mentioned that um, combination with the battery and the solar. I think we talked maybe previously last year about how that was the kind of project that was most likely to get government approval uh, going forward because it can cover that sort of scenario where maybe the wind isn't blowing or it needs to store excess energy. Most wind projects have those batteries attached these days. Yeah, you're 100% right, Ricky. Um, wind on its own um, is is not really that attractive anymore in the sense that when it's windy, we've got oodles of electricity. Uh, so, so just another one doing the same doesn't really stack up all by itself. But when you combine it with solar or you combine it with storage, that's when it really starts to work. And there are many things that the grid scale batteries can do with regard to helping us manage the quality of the electricity frequency control and voltage control, uh, which are very valuable as well. It's good to see a French company still investing in South Australia and not taking up the advice of their president, I suppose. Yeah, look, we've got a great working relationship with, with Neo. And, and in fact, uh, Angie or NG is, is another French company that's involved uh, significantly here in South Australia. Uh, we've, uh, we, we've had good relationships for a long time. They've not been soured. Uh, at all because of the, uh, the, the the disruption with the submarine contract. So uh, we stick to our business and do the very best we can with them. And with the Interconnector project, uh, I guess, first of all, what's the timeline on that? Uh, when are we likely to see uh, that actually come online? Is it too far out to be calling that? Um, no, it's not. Um, they've actually already started doing a significant amount of, of work at substations and, and from our perspective, significantly uh, near Robertstown with regard to uh, sort of actually construction of towers and pouring concrete. That will start very soon, you know, in a, in a, in a month or two. Your question about when will it be completed, they will start um, commissioning in 2023. So um, it, it'll come pretty quickly. And again, another very big economic boost to local regional economies. Now, the government has spoken previously about the uh, savings. You're welcome to drop in a second what the cost savings for consumers might be from this project. But uh, is it a two-way street when it comes to the energy generated? We can export wind in one direction, but uh, in the last 12 months, uh, 68% of the energy in the national grid was from coal. Are there going to be circumstances where we need to pull some coal energy back our way? Yeah, look, two two really good points there. One, yes, the cost of electricity has gone down and independently assessed by the Essential Services Commission arms length from government, $303 per year average household bill reduction. So very significant. Also modelled by the Australian Energy Regulator, which, which works on behalf of consumers, the interconnector will deliver $100, so another $100 in savings. And of course, that's, that's critically important to, to most household budgets, makes a really big difference. With regard to the use of that interconnector, we are actually operating in South Australia this, uh, well, sorry, last calendar year, so for, for 2021, um, around about 61, 62% renewable energy. And the number that you quoted was um, for the, the national electricity market as a whole. What we are doing and, and will continue to do um, is to, to generate more and more renewable energy in South Australia, 
help reduce the cost of electricity in South Australia, be really pleased, uh, uh, you know, occasionally to import some gas or some coal-fired energy from New South Wales or Victoria. But we will export far more renewable energy into those states than we will import from those states. So what that does is it makes us a net exporter. It makes us then a net income earner. But it also means that because we can produce lots of electricity and manage it well, we can give it to those states where uh, they are in a transition away from coal towards gas and renewables. So we'll help them with their decarbonisation uh, and we'll also uh, you know, have the, the benefit of the renewable energy. And occasionally, yes, there will be times we'll be really grateful to import some of their electricity as well. Yeah, just looking at the energy market uh, data for SA, it looks like the combination, 52% wind, 6% solar, so about 58 59%. But there's 1% or 0.825% battery. Can you just give some clarity about uh, you know, the battery it really is in these peaking circumstances that comes into play? Yes, um, there are two types of batteries, household batteries, and we've got a very generous household battery subsidy scheme. Those batteries, the smaller ones work where people's solar panels on their roofs, and this is sort of the typical average, it's not necessary for every individual household, but typically generating electricity during the day when they're not consuming much electricity, uh, store it in your own battery, then you come home in the evening, kids are home from school, uh, if it's winter or summer, you're using your heater or your air conditioner, you know, a lot more electricity. You draw it out of your battery instead of out of the grid. So you store your cheap electricity that you've, you've generated yourself. Uh, you put it into your battery and then you use it instead of buying out of the grid. The, the grid scale batteries, the really large ones, can do some of that, but it's not really what they're about because a household battery compared to the scale of electricity use in the house is quite big. A grid scale battery, even a, 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 an enormous one, you know, 100, 150 megawatts, is still actually quite small compared to the electricity usage of the entire grid. But what we do with, with those four that we've got now, another one under construction, more to come, what we do with those ones is use them very much as tools to pump massive amounts of electricity into the grid or suck massive amounts out in milliseconds. And what that does is gives us a way to to manage and control voltage and frequency. They need to be to, very close, if not exactly on 240 volts, 50 hertz of frequency. Previously, we've had blackouts because the voltage and the frequency has got out of whack. So the system blacks out to, to protect itself. Now we can avoid those with those large grid-scale batteries. Well, just changing gears quickly on these rapid antigen tests or RATs, uh, you've got a ro- there's a rollout within your electorate. I think one of the regional sites is in the electorate of Stewart. Yes, absolutely. And and you know the the, the challenges of of Omicron. Uh, are significant, but we are turning the corner and we are getting on top of them. Uh, and part of that is rolling out these rapid antigen tests so that people don't need to go into the to the lines for the PCR tests. Um, there, there's still a, a need for some PCR tests, but where people just have symptoms or they're not too sure, uh, there's a range, or if, or if they're deemed a close contact and some other reasons, they're, they're able to use these tests. We're wrestling with getting enough of them, but we've, we're going to have by... Australia Day, just under 3 million, 2.9 million of them. So we need to get the tests in, and, and that is happening. Then we need to be able to get them out to people. And today, uh, stations open in Port Augusta and Murray Bridge to be able to supply those tests. And we've actually got another set of regional uh, stations coming to in Narracourt, Port Lincoln, Mount Gambier and the Riverland. So we'll have six all up in regional South Australia where people can go and collect rapid antigen tests. And of course, that's over and above the opportunities to buy them in, in various places. We're doing everything we can to, to help people uh, get through this, this Omicron challenge the very best we can. Well, the opposition says the state government's been a bit slow on this front. The antigen tests have been available or approved for some time. Has the government been a bit too slow on the rollout with om- opening the borders again? No. Well, look, just take that with a grain of salt. That's the opposition saying what the opposition would say. Uh, and, and whenever whenever uh, the opposition says what you're doing is right, you just should have done it sooner. Um, if that's all they've got, well, then so be it. Having said that, look, we, we do need to get more of these tests out to more people. You, you, you can only work with what you've got. Um, we are determined to get more of these tests out. As I said, 
Um, you know, we've got 2.9 million of them coming soon. Then we've got another massive chunk of them coming soon after that. You can't just snap your fingers and make them. They, the tests have to be right. They have to be, uh, you know, authorised. They have to be valid. You can't just sort of start letting people make them in their own backyard. We're getting them as quickly as we can. We're rolling them out as quickly as we can. The PCR testing opportunities all around the state still exist. Uh, this is an extra opportunity that we're giving people so that we can have as much information as possible and continue to get on top of the Omicron strain. Now, just lastly, uh, your opponent, Jeff Brock, in the seat of um, Stewart, but also a number of pretty much everyone but the Liberal MPs in Parliament have called for Parliament to come back in the lower house in early February. Uh, you believe that's a good call or are you happy to be out in the electorate working with your constituents? Well, look, if it was going to be useful... Um, we would seriously consider it, but it's not, so we won't. The reality is that Parliament always rises uh, in the beginning of December, uh, goes back at the very beginning of February, except in an election year when it always comes back quickly after the election. What we're doing this year is no different to what has happened under Labor for, for you know the last several elections. Um, they're just trying to pretend that it should be different this time. The reality is there's nothing that Parliament can add to what we are doing with regard to the health experts, uh, the police experts, all of the experts that we're bringing in to support our government getting on top of Omicron. We need to be working with uh, Nicholas Spurrier, working with Grant Stevens, working with Minister Wade, working with the Premier and all of the people who sit behind them. They're the ones that we need to support to uh, to get on top of Omicron. None of that comes out of Parliament. Calling for Parliament to resume really is, is just a stunt. Well, uh, Dan Van Horst-Pillikan, great to chat with you again. We'll do so again before the election. Thank you very much for your time today. My pleasure. I really do love coming on flow with, with, with you, Ricky and, and Jason and others when I have the chance. So thank you very much. And you do a fantastic job getting out to many, many corners of regional South Australia. And I thank you for that.